In this lesson, I am going to teach you the beaded satin stitch and the beaded raised satin stitch, which we will then use to construct miniature bunches of grapes. So let's get started. The beaded satin stitch is a good stitch to use if you want to fill in an area on your fabric that is relatively small. The satin stitch is nothing more than putting a group of beads and your needle and thread, letting them fall down to the fabric so that they are touching each other and laying on the fabric. At the end of the last bead, as you hold it in place with your non-beading thumb, you are going to take the needle and go through the fabric right at the edge of the last bead. And as you pull the thread tension, you will see you have a short row of beads that are lying flat to the fabric without excess thread showing around the beads. This is an example of the beaded satin stitch in use. You will see the printed fabric of flowers and then I have made short rows of the beaded satin stitch and filled in the petals of the flower, so now they are beaded petals. To make a beaded ray satin stitch, we start out just like we did for the beaded satin stitch. I've put on my needle and thread a group of size 11 feet C beads. I've let them fall down to the fabric so they're touching each other and laying on the fabric flat. With my non-beading hand, I will lay them in place, and this time when I take the needle, Instead of putting the needle through at the point where the beads ended, like we did before, I am going to move it over so it would be underneath the last bead on that string. And now, if you look at this from the side view, you can see that the raised beaded satin stitch has, is not laying flat on the fabric, but it has a three-dimensional arch on it. So let's start making our miniature bunch of grapes. Remember, if you think about how a bunch of grapes look in the real world, they are not triangular in shape. They have rather jagged edges that um, make an organic shape, not a triangle. We're going to start by putting six size 11 C beads on the needle and thread, letting them fall down onto the fabric so they're touching each other and the fabric. And because we're going to be making the ray satin stitch, instead of putting my needle in the fabric at the end of the last bead where that ends, I'm going to put the needle under the last bead. And as I pull my thread tension, you will see we have a raised satin stitch. That's our first row. We are going to continue making rows of beads that are touching each other. Uh, they're not going to be crossing, but at the same time, when we pass the needle and thread through the fabric, we don't want to make a triangle. So you'll notice for my second row here, I'm going to use six beads again, but the needle and thread pass through the fabric inward from where the last row ended. So I have uh, five, six beads on my fabric. I'm going to lay them down in the fabric, touching each other and the fabric, so I can gauge where the last bead ends. And instead of sending my needle and thread through the point where the bead ends, I'm going to put it under that last bead. And as I pull, you see we now have two rows of um, the raised satin stitch. You'll also notice you can see fabric through the rows. That could be lessened by having a background fabric that is the same color or value of the beads you are putting on it. I've done two rows of six. This time I'm going to put on five beads. We're going to eventually work down to one bead. And we made two rows of six, so we're going to make one row of five. And after I complete this row, I will be making two rows of four. So that's how we're going to get the organic look. We want to replicate 
as closely as you can to nature what a bunch of grapes would look like or at least make the eye believe that's what we're seeing. So there's my four beads. First row four, I put the needle and thread slightly under the last bead, so we're still getting raised satin stitch. I did one row of four, so I'm going to do another row of four. Remember, we're alternating the row counts by two of a count, that was six, one of a count, that was five, and now two counts of four. For demonstration purposes, I'm using a color of thread that is in high contrast for the be with the beads, and I normally would not do that, but I want you to see what the needle and thread are doing. Okay, we're down to our row of three beads, and I hope you can see that the bunch of grapes are starting to um, be created. So that's our first row of three. You'll also see it doesn't matter if you work all the rows right to left or you alternate them or you work all of them left to right. That's just your personal preference. Alright, so this now is our second row of three beads. We want it always touching and butting up to the row that precedes it. Okay, second row of three, we're on to two. And when you get to the second to the last row, which is two, you get to be the artist and decide if you want to put on two rows of, of two count or to stop and go for the one. I'm going to go for one today. You'll also see when you put on the two beads that they do separate from each other and you do see the beading thread. That's why we would usually use a thread that is in the same color or value of the beads we're using. There's our bunch of grapes. You can always train it a little bit with your fingers to make them lie better together. The next step I'll show you is how to put on a bugle bead for a stamp. Off camera, I made a secure ending knot on the wrong side of the fabric, and from the wrong side of the fabric, I've taken the needle through the fabric about under the third row from the top, and I'm pulling the needle out now and thread, which is underneath the arch of um, the raised bead and satin stitch, and I'm going to pick up on my needle and thread one bugle bead, and I'm going to take that bugle bead and I'm going to push it down so that part of it is under the grapes and part is on top of the grapes. Take the needle to the wrong side of the fabric, take a stitch, and then you can make an ending knot and your grapes are complete. Let's take a look at a couple of examples using the beaded grapes on art quilts. This is an example of combining ribbon embroidery thread embroidery, cigarette silks, and beads, and a charm for to the composition. And you'll see underneath the bunch of grapes here on the vine that there is first some gold lace put on the fabric sewn in place. Then I went back for the vines. I did the feather stitch with thread. And then for my final step, went back and put my grapes on the vine. Here is also an example of finished grapes. I have altered the color so that each bunch is not exactly alike in appearance, both by the color of beads I've used and how I've staggered my rows that are still parallel. And each uh, bunch of grape has the same number of beads. If I turn this sideways, you can probably see that I started out with a feather stitch, a beaded feather stitch, added some leaves, and also added the bunch of grapes. I hope you found this lesson helpful and happy beading.